for your listening enjoyment, John Lund as... Johnny Deller. Bradley, Johnny. Read any good books lately? Now, that's a brilliant conversational bit. I'm referring specifically to the books of Martin Venneberg. Venneberg? Is that the novelist who made such a big splash about, uh, oh, 20 years ago? The same. The self-star genius of Chicago's literati, who wrote two smash sellers back in the 30s and hasn't been heard from since. Not until yesterday, that is. And what happened yesterday? Well, at the height of his heyday, he bought a $25,000 paid-up plus policy from him. We had a request from him yesterday asking for some change of beneficiary form. Oh, what's so unusual about that? Nothing except that his wife's the present beneficiary. And the Chicago police have been looking for her ever since Vandenberg was met murdered last night. Well, might be a good idea to brush up on my reading of that. Mind if I break in here to ask you a question? Here it is. How much do you know about your United States government? For example, do you know what the work of the Department of Agriculture entails? Somebody, someday, may recommend that the Department of Agriculture be called the Department of General Scientific Progress because employees of this branch of our government have been responsible for the improvement of our shoe leather, our mattress stuffing, and the rubber tires which we put on our automobiles. But these improvements are somewhat of a sideline, since the main duty of the department is to assist the farmers of America. Now, back in the days when it was just getting organized and explaining to Congress why it needed more money, the Department of Agriculture acted only as a sort of clearinghouse for information which farmers picked up and passed on about better ways to grow corn, raise pigs, and so on. Then, the farmers began asking questions about getting rid of blight and parasites and other such farming problems, and the department had to come up with the right answer. That's when the department began to expand and take a direct part in improving farm operations. As an example of its success in farming improvements, there's the item of egg production. In the past 50 years, the production of eggs has been increased over 300% as a result of the expert advice on the feeding and raising of poultry developed by workers in the Department of Agriculture. Other important developments have been made by the department's chemists, such as the improvement of insect killers, fertilizers, and the discovery of new ways in which to use products which farmers have been growing since the beginning of time. For example, do you know it is now possible to make mucilage from sweet potatoes? Paper from corn stalks, paint brushes from milk, and wood as strong as steel. These are just a few of the advancements made by the Department of Agriculture. Future advancements will add much to our American way of life. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, Washingtonian Life Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the frustrated Phoenix matter. Expense account item one, $63.30. Airfare and incidentals between Hartford and Chicago. Expense account item two, $1.20. Cab fare from the Sherman House to the editorial offices of the Daily Examiner. I figured a quick brush up on Martin Venneberg's recent history might come in handy. But as it happened, I didn't get past the city editor's desk. Sure, you can use the more dollar. Might have a better idea for you, though. Oh, yeah? What's that? Have a talk with Richard Hanley. Who is Hanley? Freelance literary critic and columnist. We buy a lot of his stuff. He can tell you everything that's in the morgue and then some. Sounds like he knew Vandenberg pretty well. Yeah, he was his disciple, friend, father confessor, and psychiatric social worker all for 20 years. That sounds like a pretty good recommendation. If you can find Vandenberg's wife, she could give you a better one. Oh, how's that? Hanley was her first husband. Expense account item three. $1.35. Cab fare to Richard Hanley's modern studio apartment on Elm Street. 
The severe, functional appearance of the studio seemed to be reflected in Richard Hanley. Which uh, Martin Vandenberg did you uh, want me to tell you about, Mr. Dollar? The man or the writer? There's a difference. As a writer, he'd been touched by the gift of genius. As a man, he was dissolute, depraved, contemptible. Would you mind explaining that, Mr. Hanley? Yeah, in 1933 and 34, he published two of the greatest novels ever written. They burst upon the muck heap of the creative writing of the times like twin comets blazing a pathway to the star. For the next 20 years, he drowned that brilliant light in a foul sea of alcohol dissipation and moral dissolution. In short... The Martin Vennerberg who was killed last night, Mr. Dollar, was a drunken bum. I was told that you were a friend of Vennerberg's. Seems I was misinformed. For 20 years, I have been trying to get that man to write again. Write as I knew he could, as he'd done before. I nursed him through his alcoholic stupors, counseled him, pleaded with him, even financed him for a year or two. And how did he react? Well, the vows were many, the accomplishments nil. Whatever I gave him, he used to sate his appetite for dissipation. Well, 20 years is a long time to spend in the face of all that. Not to mention the loss of your wife. I hadn't contemplated giving him Helene, too, Mr. Dollar. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Where is she now? I have no idea. I'd finally given up on Venneberg some five weeks ago. I haven't seen either of them since. Well, anything else you can tell me, Mr. Hanley? Any ideas as to who might have killed him or why? No. He had no personal position. Possibly no longer even a talent for anyone to be jealous of. I can't conceive of any possible motives, Mr. Dollar. Well, there's always that $25,000 insurance policy. I walked over to the Chicago Avenue police station and introduced myself to Lieutenant Vorschach, who was in charge of the investigation. Oh, for what it's worth, here's what we got on it, Dollar. The Vinnerberg was killed in the one-room rat nest he called home by two twenty-five caliber bullets fired at close range. Ballistics just classified the gun, Beretta automatic. Time of death was approximately 11 p.m. last night. Nobody heard the shots. Nobody saw anybody come in or out. Nobody knows any reason why Vinnerberg should have been killed. Who discovered the body, Lieutenant? A man by the name of Dalton Towler. Seems to be an old friend of Vinnerberg, strictly a screwball bohemian type, you know? What time did he come across it? Three o'clock this morning. Unusual hour for him to come calling, wasn't it? Well, not according to Tyler. It claims he was working on some earth-shattering poems at home. He finished them and tore right over to show them to Vanneberg. According to him, the womb of night is the birthplace of genius, and time is an artificial dungeon created by benighted Philistines in which to imprison men's souls. Unquote. That's very descriptive, but uh, not very illuminating. Well, the same could be said about everything else about this case so far. Until we came across that insurance policy, we had a blank right down the line. You figure that's the motive for Vanneberg's murder? That's the only one that even looks close. What about the wife, Helene? Yeah, that's got us beat, too. As far as we can find out, she disappeared five days ago. Nobody in the neighborhood has seen or heard of her since. We got an APB out on her, though. We'll pick her up sooner or later. Uh Uh-huh. Anything in Vennerberg's recent actions to give us a lead? Well, one unusual thing popped up. Don't know if it means anything, though. Yeah, what's that? We found a nearly new portable typewriter up in his room. Clean, oil, ready to go. The neighbors tell us that for the past week, Martin Vennerberg has been writing again. Only we couldn't find a scrap of manuscript. Well, there wasn't much more Vorschach could tell me. Vennerberg's history during the past ten years was summed up on the police blotter. Arrest for drunkenness, vagrancy, disorderly conduct. And the coroner's jury would write the epitaph. Homicide at the hands of person or persons unknown. I found Dalton Towler where his landlady said he would be. In Newberry Park. One square block of tired grass and scraggly bushes in the midst of a dreary section of Chicago's near north side. Collar was addressing a couple of dispirited-looking squirrels. Come, you beady-eyed scavengers seeking the humorous fruit of the goober. There are no gleanings here save those unpalatable ones scraped from the moldering refuse of the ash heaps called the mines of men. Do you think the squirrels understand that? Hmm? Oh, Far better, perhaps, than the two-legged protoplasmic dullards who stalk the earth under the guise of homo sapiens. Well, I have to take your word for that, Mr. Towler. 
a unilateral knowledge of identity which indicates you have the advantage of me, sir. Well, my name is Dollar. I'm an insurance investigator. In other words, a brazen delver into the secrets of man. I'd like to ask you a few questions about Martin Venneberg. Yes. A final degradation of genius. To be dissected piecemeal upon the cold, impersonal, autopsy slab of a park bench. All I want to do is find out who killed him and why. An impossible task, sir. You ignore the simple fact that Martin Venneberg is not dead. That's not what the police records say. An abysmal conclusion reached by pygmy-minded illiterates. A soul such as that of Martin Venneberg can never die. It will rise again from the ashes of its mortal remains like, like that, that fabled bird, the phoenix, and soar on glorious wings of deathless prose forevermore. Well, let's get back to the police blotter and sordid realism, shall we? Yes. Very well, sir. What do you wish from me? Any information you can give me about who might have wanted to kill Martin Venneberg? Their names are the Legion, sir. How's that, Mr. Tanner? Any of the incompetent, the jealousy with me, the hacks who spew out their clumsy, illy informed words could have killed Venneberg cheerfully out of sheer frustrated envy. Well, I'm looking for a little more practical motive. Well, what more practical motive could there be, sir? Worldly goods? Of these he had none. What about his wife? Ha! <laughs> the ridiculous implication. Why? Helene is a lovely soul, one who worshipped at Venneberg's shrine, who was dedicated selflessly to her tireless task of catering to his genius. I can think of 25,000 reasons why she might get tired of it. Surely you're not referring to that insurance policy. Well, it supplies motive. Helene's disappeared. Unless she turns up fast with an airtight alibi, it looks pretty bad for her. Yeah, I'd never considered it in that light before. Well, now that you have, how does it look? Would it be of any assistance to her if I were to inform you where she was last night? It might. You realize, of course, that my antipathy towards the minions of the law prevented me from divulging this sooner. But if it might be of possible aid to... Where her, was she, Tyler? In uh, where she'd been every evening for the past month. Typing manuscripts, sir, at the apartment of Richard Hanley. <laughs> That's right, Dollar. Helene has been coming here evenings to uh, type my column for me. How did you forget to mention that little fact earlier? My attorney was out of town. I wish to consult with him first. What about Helene or yourself? There have been no official charges made against her, and uh, I've nothing to be concerned about. Mm hmm. Where is Helene now? I can tell you only what I just finished telling Lieutenant Bozak over the phone. And what was that? I expect Helene here as usual at 8 o'clock tonight. No objections if the lieutenant and I are here. Not at all. My attorney will be here too. Do you mind telling me what time Helene left here last night? It was a little past midnight. Are you sure about the time? Just as certain as you are that Venneberg was killed at approximately an hour before then. Well, he got an alibi ready too. You seem to have thought of everything, Mr. Hanley. Under the circumstances, I thought it a reasonable thing to do. Expense account item four, 65 cents. Cab fare to the Chicago Avenue police station. I just paid off the driver and was heading for the entrance when Horshock came hurrying down the stairs toward a squad car parked at the curb. Oh, Dollar. You got here just in time. Come on, come on, Dollar. Yeah, sure, Lieutenant. What's up? A break on the Vandenberg case. You picked up a lane? No, but this might be better. County Hospital, Joe. Some woman took an overdose of sleeping pills with an old picture of Vandenberg's in her hand. A personally autographed copy of one of his books was on the bed table beside her. <laughs> Sound interesting? Yeah, maybe. What are you holding out, Lieutenant? They found a twenty-five caliber Beretta automatic under her pillow. <laughs> So many great men have attained the highest office in our land, the Presidency of the United States. Can you guess the name of this man? He rose to the Presidency through successful careers as lawyer, army officer, and statesman. Though President Garfield offered him a cabinet position, 
he turned it down to become a senator from Ohio. Later, as president, he recommended the annexation of Hawaii. But his term expired before the bill could be acted on. He also helped the admission of North and South Dakota, Montana, Washington, Idaho, and Wyoming as states. If you don't have his name by now, here's another clue. In 1890, he signed a bill giving pensions to American war veterans. Who was he? Benjamin Harrison, 23rd President of the United States. His life is part of your American heritage. And now with our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. I ran out to Wood Street and Cook County Hospital it took us approximately 12 minutes. One of the interns on duty at the emergency entrance gave us a briefing in one of the admittance rooms. Here's all we've got on her. It isn't much. She only came in about 20 minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, we know. What's the dope on? Yeah, uh, Jane Doe, white, female, American, about 30 years of age. Reported symptoms, overdose of barbiturates. Stomach comatose condition, pulse, respiration, blood pressure normal. Stomach contents removed, stimulants administered hypodermically, patient temporarily in 312. Yeah, well, these are the highlights, gentlemen. Uh-huh. Seem to be a few discrepancies, Lieutenant. Now, the normal pulse, blood pressure, and respiration, huh? they don't fit in with my ideas about the symptoms of barbiturate poisoning. <laughs> they very definitely don't. I'd say the odds are about 10 to 1 that the lab report will show stomach contents to be normal. Uh-huh. Well, let's have a look at her, Dollar. Please forgive me. I didn't mean to do it, Martin. But it's all right now, darling. We'll be together again. Uh, we'd like to ask you a few questions, Miss. No, no. Go away. Leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Oh, Martin. Martin, darling. Martin. I'm a police officer, Miss Lieutenant Borshak. Police officer? And this is Johnny Dollar Insurance. I don't care what you are. Now go away, please. Go away. And leave me here with my memories of Martin. What was Martin Venneberg to you? He was my one and only true love. I worshipped at the shrine of his genius. Life isn't worth living without him. He was the shining beacon that was my one and only guiding light. Are you sure that uh, shining beacon isn't the spotlight at that grindhouse on North Clark Street? Hmm? What are you talking about? You're Dolly, darling, aren't you? The one whose build is the tempestuous sweetheart of Pepsicorian delights? So what? What's that got to do with my love for Martin Venneberg? You better be able to prove it. What do I got to prove? It's enough for me that him and me were secret lovers. What right have you got to come around crying into a person's secret life? Well, there happen to be a few laws concerning attempted suicide, Miss Darling. Laws? You mean that there's a law? Not to mention a few about filing a false crime report. Now, wait a minute. I didn't do nothing wrong. You better start talking, Miss Darling. That low-down, dirty, stinking Sammy Farwell. Your, uh, press agent? Yeah, it was his idea. I told him it was nuts that we couldn't get away with it, but no, he's got himself delusions. The greatest gimmick since Barnum, he says, so look what happens. I get myself in a jam in this lousy pill factory. Got to wrestle with a stomach pump yet, and for what? What am I going to get out of it now? Probably 30 to 90 days, depending on the judge. <laughs> Back at the Chicago Avenue station, Vorschach went through the routine on Dolly Darling and her publicity agent, Sam Farwell. It turned out just about as we expected. Well, there it is, Dolly. Ballistics quiz, the 25 caliber Beretta they had planted as a prop for the publicity stunt. Mm-hmm. 
Any uh, previous arrests? Uh, a couple of lewd performances for Dolly, some old ones for Farwell, uh, dissemination of pornographic literature, assaults, no convictions. Venneberg's mm-hmm. name doesn't show in either package, though. So. Well, it doesn't help much in the little matter of who killed him, does it? And I'm waiting for Helene Venneberg to do that. Expect her to show up at Hanley's tonight? Yeah, it could be. And if she doesn't? Well, we got a tail on Hanley. He might lead us to her. If not, our APB will pick her up eventually. Hmm, maybe. <laughs> you don't sound very convinced. I guess I'm just not the optimistic type. I spent the rest of the day covering the bars, bookie joints, and assorted dives on the near north side that had been notoriously frequented by Martin Venneberg. I wound up in Dalton Towler's neighborhood no wiser than when I started. I figured I had nothing to lose by paying a little social call. I take it, Mr. Dollar, that your visit has no connection with whatever impression my <laughs> charm, wit, and brilliance may have had upon you earlier today? Oh, maybe you're being too modest, Mr. Towler. Oh, modesty is an attribute only of the mediocre, sir. It is unbecoming in the realm of talent and utterly irreconcilable with genius. Well, into which category do those poems of yours fall? Uh, poems, sir? The ones you were rushing to Martin Venneberg when you found his body. Oh, they're not worthy of discussion. Insignificant in conception. Puerile in realization. I, uh, I destroyed them. Is that what you did with Venneberg's work, too? Your meaning escapes me, sir. Venneberg was working on something. The first writing he'd done in 20 years. He'd been at it steadily for a week, but the police didn't find a trace of manuscript. What happened to it, Mr. Towler? <laughs> I trust my impression that you're accusing me of having pilfered it is, is erroneous, Mr. Dollar. You found his body. True, but I found no such manuscript. Well, have it your way. But the police are bound to dig up that manuscript sometime. Uh, one moment, sir. Yeah? There is something I can tell you. Well, let's have it. Martin Venneberg was writing. It was being done under contract to someone. For money. Who was he writing it for? So far, I've been unable to ascertain. But he, uh, he showed me some of it. It was incredible, Mr. Dollar. Badly written? Martin Venneberg was utterly incapable of writing even one inferior line, sir. No, it was the contents to which I refer. Indescribable filth. I still find it impossible to believe. So you took the manuscript and destroyed it. It's what I would have wished to do. Unfortunately, there was no trace of the manuscript when I arrived there. Uh Uh-huh. He started writing this stuff just about the time his wife disappeared. Any connection? A definite one, sir. Helene had stood by him all these years... Because of her faith that someday he would write again. When he began, and she learned what he was doing, it was impossible for her to bear. She left him. I suppose that's why he wanted to take her name off that insurance policy. Such, I believe, was his intention. Why tell me all this now, Tyler? It was your reference to the police, possibly finding that manuscript. You're hoping that I'll find it first and destroy it? If the rebirth of the soaring phoenix that was Martin Venneberg should be frustrated because of that writing, it would be the most heinous of all crimes, Mr. Dollar. Worse than murder? In my humble opinion, sir? Yes. It was getting on toward 8 o'clock when I left Towler's, so I called Lieutenant Vorschach to see if he was ready to keep our appointment with Richard Hanley. We don't have to bother going over there now, Dollar. Why not, Lieutenant? We just found Helene Venneberg. Yeah? Where? In the Chicago River. Floating face down. The little preliminary examination shows she died about 12 to 24 hours ago. Well, the time could match pretty closely with Martin's death. Yeah, so could the probable cause of death. A couple of small caliber bullet wounds. Too soon for ballistics to identify yet, though. Uh Uh-huh. Well, what about Richard Hanley? Uh, right now, he's under physician's care. Broke down completely when we gave him the news. Uh-huh. It's possible he did it, of course. Jealousy could give him a pretty good motive for Martin's death. Doesn't tie in with Helene very well, though. No. That, that'll be our headache from now on. Well, at least your job's over. Yeah, it looks like it, but uh, I'm in no hurry. Oh? Uh-huh. You got something on your mind? Two things. A missing manuscript and a twenty-five caliber Beretta. Yeah. Well, I think maybe I got the gun figured, so let's try the manuscript first, huh? Well, Vandenberg was writing again. 
According to Towler, it was the kind of literature they sell in back rooms and dark alleys. Yeah. Towler thinks somebody who peddles that stuff gave him a commitment. Yeah. Yeah, that starts to tie in with a gun pad on the top, doesn't it? Somebody knew enough to use a Beretta as the plant in that publicity stunt of Dolly Darling's. Even ballistics didn't know the tight gun that had killed Benneberg until maybe an hour before. Not on pornographic literature. Only thing missing seems to be a motive. Why don't we drop over to Dolly the Darling's press agent and see if we can find one of them. The offices of Sammy Farwell, publicist, were located on the third floor of an old office building on North Wells Street. Down that way. Yeah. Come on, Dollar. Farwell, open up, police officers. Open up. Better break it down. Oh, wait a minute. Ah. <laughs> Good evening, gentlemen. Welcome to the sacrificial ceremony. Dollar, something's burning in that wastebasket. Pray, pray do not trouble yourselves, gentlemen. It's much too late. The last works of Martin Venneberg have already been reduced to ashes. Where's Farwell? In the inner office, sir. Oh, no need for haste. He's quite incapable of leaving there under his own locomotion. Hmm. Looks like Towler's right. Yeah. There's the Beretta he used. I trust you agree that this is a most satisfactory evening's work, gentlemen. All right, Towler, let's hear about it. Well, of course, Lieutenant. I must confess I feel quite proud of myself for what has just transpired. You knew Farwell had killed Martin and Helene? Not his actual identity, no. But there had been word around of a violent disagreement over the unwelcome attentions Martin's sponsor was paying to Helene. It obviously ended in the shooting. Then he disposed of Helene later as a possible witness. Why didn't you come to the police with this? <laughs> My dear lieutenant, it was only the manuscript that was of concern to me. It was vital that I get to it before you did. And not until Mr. Dollar departed my humble abode did I learn Farwell's identity through the good offices of an old confrere. So you came up here, shot him, and burned the script? In essence, uh, yes. There was a bit of disagreement involving that gun in there. Yeah. <laughs> no need to appear so disconsolate, Mr. Dollar. I would say that all in all in all, when the phoenix does eventually rise from the ashes, he would agree that things have turned out quite well. <laughs> Expense account item five, $19.40, hotel bill and miscellaneous. Expense account item six, $67.60, airfare and incidentals back to Hartford. Expense account total, $153.50. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> 